Hello and welcome back to Ganesha Institute channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss about harmonic analysis in Fourier series. We have already studied that in Fourier series, we transform a particular function into sine and cosine forms, right? And now in this series, we are going to discuss about harmonic analysis. So let's see with the formulas and questions. So in harmonic analysis, you know that if we take the example of sin x, so the graph of sin x is like this, right? So if it repeats after a regular interval of time, okay? So this wave-like structure, it has an amplitude, the height, the maximum value, and then the regular intervals, right? So in that sense, the harmonic analysis, if we check out that after uh, you know which interval it will repeat itself so any function can be represented into different harmonic values when it comes to Fourier series so the formula for that conversion is a naught plus sigma n equals 1 to infinity e n cos n theta plus b n sine n theta okay here what are these coefficients a naught Basically, this is the constant term. A n and B n are the coefficients of cos n theta and sin n theta, right? So the formula for A naught, that means constant term is 1 by n sigma y. I'll tell you what this n and uh, y uh, signify. Then we have got A n, which is 2 by n sigma y cos n theta. Because A n has cos with it, so cos n theta and you can assume that it would be i mean bn would be 2 by n sigma y sine n theta okay and if you want to calculate the amplitude you know the maximum height then the amplitude would be for getting the amplitude you need to understand how we can expand this in terms of harmonic analysis let's say question will ask you find out the first harmonic Okay, so first harmonic means your value of n would be 1. So that means if you substitute here value as n, 1, value of n as 1, fx would be a0 plus a1 cos 1 theta plus b1 sin 1 theta, right? Then if it will ask you second harmonic, so because this is the summation from 1, to infinity and so firstly is open it up to 1 then you can take 2 and 3 and you can take summation wherever you want to take it up to infinity so a1 this is first harmonic and then you will apply n as 2 here so a2 cos 2 theta plus b2 sine 2 theta right so this would be your second harmonic right then, in the first harmonic, if question will ask you that find out the amplitude, so it would be, amplitude is, is the magnitude basically. So, you have to take A1 and B1 and find out the magnitude. Okay, this would be your amplitude. So, let's see with the help of a question that how we can apply these formulas and can find out the first harmonic. So if you see questions given here that you need to find out the constant term and the first harmonic in the Fourier expansion of y. So what is given to you is the values of x and y. So as you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and for each value you have y value against them. So 9, 18, 3, 4, it's with 2, right? So, this is 24, 28, 26, and 20, right? Now, as we have discussed earlier, just before this slide, that the function in terms of harmonic analysis is a naught plus a1 cos theta plus b1 sine theta. We are not taking cos 2 theta sine 2 and so on because this is only asking for the first harmonic okay so 
now our responsibility is to find out the values of a naught, a one, and p one. So the values of these things are one by n sigma y. For a a one, it is two by n sigma y cos theta. And for b n, it is two by n sigma y sine theta. Okay. So first thing is what is n? So basically, n is total number of values given to you. If you see one, one, two, three, four, five, six, total values are six. You also need theta in this question. So as we know that the complete circle forms 360 degree, and there are six values, six values. So it will be 60 degree for one part. Now, if you see, if I'm talking about theta. So this is zero. So zero into sixty is zero. One into sixty is sixty. Two into sixty is one twenty degree. Uh, three into sixty is one eighty degree. Degrees. Four into sixty is two forty. And then five into sixty is three hundred degree. Right. Now you can easily find out the values for y sine theta and cos theta. So if you see y sine theta means nine sine zero, right? Sine zero is zero, so it will be zero. Then you have sine uh, y that is eighteen sine sixty, right? And eighteen sine sixty is fifteen point six. You can calculate it with the help of scientific calculator. Then you have got y y sine theta that means y twenty four sine one twenty. And it will form 20.8. Then you have 28 sine 180, sine 180 is zero. Then you have 26 sine 240, which is minus 22.5 with the help of scientific calculator. And then you have got 20 sine 30, 20 sine 300, which is minus 17.3. So once you solve all these. You will get around 3.4. Okay, so this is the summation of y sine theta, which you can use here. Then you have y cos theta with you. So for y cos theta, again just uh, here theta is given, y is given. So 9 cos 0, cos 0 is 1, so 9. Then 18 cos 60, that means 9 because cos 60 is 1 by 2. Then 24 cos 120 is 12, but in minus because of the change in quadrant. Then 28 cos 180 is minus 13. Then 26 cos 240 is um, it is minus 28, and it is minus 13. Then you have got 20 cos 300, which is 10. So now, if we sum them up, nine nine eighteen and ten twenty eight minus twenty eight zero, then minus twenty five, right? So if you substitute all these values here, and of course summation y is also required if you just need this formula. So what is it? If you add them up, it would be one and fifteen. Now, your a naught will become one by n, which is one by six, and your sigma y is one hundred and fifteen. So that would be nineteen point. One seven, then two by n, which is six. Summation of y cos theta is y cos theta is minus three four five. So this will be uh, when you solve it minus eight point three three. Then your b one, this is n is one here. Two by n that is one by six. Summation y sine theta, which is three point four. So And that too, it is minus 3.4 basically. So minus 3.4. So when you solve this, it will be minus 1.13. So now you have got the constant term, which is a naught, and your harmonic progression will be f x a naught, which is 19.17 plus a one, which is minus 8.33. Cos theta plus b1 that is minus 1.13 sine theta. 
This would be your harmonic representation in the for extension. I hope you understand this concept. Question can ask, you know, there is a variety of uh, questions if you see. Here, the question has asked you about the first harmonic. If it would be second harmonic, then you have to take A2 and B2 also apart from A1 and B1. So it would be plus A2 cos theta plus B2 sin theta, okay? And sometimes theta can also be given to you. Then it, the question will be much more easier. And sometimes question can ask you the coefficient, coefficient of cos theta. That means in the first harmony, cos theta, um, the coefficient of cos theta is A1, right? Uh, so in that sense, you can find out that value. So I'm hoping that you have understood this topic and if so then don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Till my next video, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.